Welcome to part one of my character select tutorial. So in this video we're going to get the project ready and create the various classes that we need to code. Uh, so without further ado, let's go into it. So the first thing we need to do in this project is to enable UMG in the C++ side. And also, just for reference, uh, we'll link it in the description below. I'm using engine version 4.26 and I'm using Visual Studio version 2019. And I found that 17 was a bit too slow for my liking, so I've just made the switch to 19. It seems to be a bit faster. So all we need to do for the first bit is go into Visual Studio. So if you've got this as a C++ um, project, please make it a C++ project. Um, and if you go into, say, I don't know, just click on the one of the classes in the folder here, it'll open up Visual Studio, it'll bring it to the default class. But the actual one that we need is called, uh, basically, whatever your project name is, .build.cs. And if I double click that, it'll open up the, basically, the module uh, dependencies uh, for the project. And as you can see, you've got core, core U object, engine, input, HMD for VR. Now what we need to do is we need to modify this by just putting another comma in, open quotation marks. And all we need to do is just type in UMG. Control, Shift and S to save. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on here and I'm just going to build. Uh, give it some time to build. Okay, so it's taken a little bit of time to compile the code, but it's done it. And what that'll enable now is for us to basically start using the API for UMG, so all the widget code in that within the file headers. So what I tend to do now is um, I close the project at this point and I restart the project. So basically, just go back in. file, exit, and then just restart the editor. I'm not sure why, but it's some reason. Um, it can desync the editor with the Visual Studio and it doesn't pick it up. Okay, welcome back again. And after a short time, the editor's reopened. And like I say, this project should be ready now to start coding the, the widget. But so before we start to actually coding any widgets, we're gonna actually just create the classes that we need first. So we'll do that next. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a player controller class that um, will call and create the widget within code. So I'm going to just going to right click in here, new C++ class, and I'm going to choose a player controller, hit next, and I'm going to call this character select controller. Hit create class. Um, it'll take a little bit of time to create the new headers and the new code, uh, the source code. Okay, welcome back. I do apologise, it took a little time for the uh, for it to compile. So if I just head into Visual Studio now, uh, we now have a header file and a source file for character select controller. So that's this part done. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to create an interface with a method in it that we'll need. So the next class we need is an interface and this will be put onto the character select controller and will be called from the the widget whenever we, uh, the player wants to select a character. Um, very similar to the previous blueprint tutorial that I've done. So what we need to do is we need to right click in here again a new C++ class and if you just scroll right down to the bottom you'll have an Unreal Interface. Hit uh, Select. And I'll do all this character select interface. Choose Create Class. And it'll add the header file and the source file to the project. Okay, so that's added it to the project. 
Let's quickly reload all modules. And as you can see here, we've got a header file and we've got a source file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly populate the method for this. So because it's an interface, then it does have to need to be public. So I'm going to declare virtual void spawn character. Uh, what I want it to do is I want it to take in a UNT uh, 8 index and that's literally going to be what the widget passes through when it selects a button and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that into a pure function as well and then quickly I'm just going to compile this Okay, that's compiled. Head back into Visual Studio, and that's our method ready to use. Okay, so in the next section, um, we will go into actually creating the C++ widget. Okay, so for the final part of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create the widget C++ class. Uh, we're going to create a blueprint widget with some buttons and we'll reparent the C++ class to the that blueprint widget. So we'll go into that now. So back into the editor, right click in the your C++ classes folder here, uh, show all classes and what I need you to do is search for a user widget. Select that. I need to call that in. So I'm just going to call this. That's just called the select widget. Create the class. Now give us some time for the uh, code to compile. Okay, so it took a little bit of time for the compiler to finish. So. What we need to do next is if we go into here, you can see we've got a select widget, and we've also got, I'll just open the source as well. So you've got a header and a source file. Okay, so what we need to do next is I've already got a blueprints folder, you might recognize it from a previous tutorial. Um, so if I go in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in here, use it interface, and I'm going to select widget blueprint. Select that. Call this new character select. You can call it what you want, but I'm bearing in mind that I've already got something called character select widget, so I'll just call this new character select widget blueprint. Double click on that, and what I'm going to quickly do is just dock it at the top, just hit save there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the editor on this side, um, or to panel. Um, here, uh, I'm going to drop in a horizontal box. I'm going to basically center it to the middle. And what this panel is going to do is going to act as a place where I can just store buttons. So I'm going to drop a button on here and put some text on it as well. And quickly, I'm just going to change the text color to black because it's doesn't contrast very well with the grey. So I'm just going to rename this one red button. And in the text block, I'm just going to put red. So to justify it. So I want uh, three more, uh, sorry, I want two more buttons for blue and green. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select the red button, control C. Select the horizontal box, right click, choose paste. I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to change the name of this button to blue button. And I'm going to just quickly change the text to blue as well. Same thing again, the button should, uh, should be in the clipboard, so if I just control V, it should be able to just come up with another button that you can edit. Uh, I'm just going to change the name to green button. Um, same as before, just change it to green text to match. So what I'll just quickly do is just make it a bit more better. Change that to 
fill. Also change that to fill. Change that to fill. So it doesn't like that at all. And in fact, we'll just go back to auto. Instead, on the palette, we're going to search for spaces. I'm just going to drop a spacer in here. And drop another spacer in just above the green button here. Compile that. And then we need to reparent the C class. So if you look in the top right corner, you can see that it's parented to user widget, but we want it to be parented to the, the class that we created. So all you need to do is you need to go into class settings. And here you'll see class options, parent class, user widget. So that corresponds with the top right. And in the drop down menu, I'm just going to change that to select widget, which is our C class that I called, the particular one I called it. But obviously, if you've called it something different, um, please choose the C class name that you chose. Hit save. And pretty much, that is a character widget ready to go. So, Basically, that's all the classes that we need, including the blueprint setup for the for the widget that we'll be using in the game. So that brings us to the end of part one, and I'll see you in part two, where we'll start to code the we'll start to code the different classes.